Dear friends in Christ, grace and peace to you from Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Everyone get their fill of turkey. Everyone get in their Thanksgiving nap. Because now is not the time to do it. With the days and weeks leading up to this particular Sunday, there were a number of things that went through my mind as I reflected on the text and on the day itself. The first was that it's Christ the King Sunday. Christ the King Sunday marks the end of our church year, our calendar year in the church. And now we stand on the threshold of Advent. Next weekend, as we gather here in this place, a new church year begins with the first Sunday in Advent. One of the other things that continued to rise to the surface as I was thinking about this day was one particular word that stood out. And that word was humility. Humility. And I started to think of an interaction I had about four weeks ago. I had the opportunity and the privilege to meet one of the greatest baseball players to ever play the game. I came home one evening, and my wife told me that the Cal Ripken Foundation was doing some work at her high school in North Minneapolis. I looked at her and I said, what? Is Cal Ripken Jr. going to be there? And she said, who's that? And I said, he's only one of the greatest baseball players to ever play the game. He was the rookie of the year in 1982. He went on to break Lou Gehrig's record for most consecutive games played. He's the Iron Man, Hall of Famer. So that's a big deal? I said, can you find out if he's going to be there? So she came home from work the next day and said, yeah, it turns out Cal Ripken Jr. is going to be at our school. Can I come? I got to tell you, meeting Cal Ripken Jr., I felt like I was 12 years old all over again. I loved watching him play baseball, and the way he played it was amazing. It was professional, and it was beautiful, and he could not have been more gracious and a nicer person to have met. His foundation was doing some really good work in the community and at the school. And part of his time at the school, he held a coach's clinic. And I was able to stand in on that. And he conducted this coach's clinic with about 30 coaches. And he asked them, hey, what questions do you have of me? Well, one of the coaches said, Mr. Ripken, what do you do when you have one of the best players on your team and in the conference and they know it and they act like it too and they believe there is nothing more that they can learn from me as a coach or from anyone else Cal's response was this you teach them humility He went on to tell a story about a young man who is working his way up through the minor leagues, a pretty good baseball player himself. Cal was working with him in the batting cage, and towards the end of their session, he said, I want you to hit the next 10 balls right through the center of that square at the end of the cage. The ball player stood into the box, and as each pitch came, he couldn't do it. Out of frustration, he looked at Cal and said, you think it's so easy, why don't you do it, and tossed him the bat. Now, Cal retired from Major League Baseball in 2001, but he said, hitting a ball is a little bit like riding a bike. He stood in the batter's box, and the next 10 pitches that came down the center, he hit right through the middle of the square. Humility. Sometimes we need to be taught humility. Towards the end of World War I, and then in 1922, Pope Pius XI made some observations about the world, and particularly about Europe and the surrounding countries. 
He noticed that there was, even though there was an end to the war, that there was still no true peace, that for many, their behaviors continued in very negative ways. There was a growing sense of secularism. There was this sense of individualism that was taking place. There was this sense of dictators that were beginning to emerge in Europe and beyond. People were being drawn to the kingdom of the world as opposed to the reign of God. People were being lured by the temptations of success and wealth. They were being lured by the temptations of social status. And all of these things that were drawing them away from God. And so, in 1925, with this idea of perhaps sometimes we need to be taught humility... We need to understand that there are things that we can continue to learn today. In 1925, the Roman Catholic Church brought forth the Festival of Christ the King. And it was adopted by many Protestant churches, including the Lutherans, as a day that was set aside to answer the question, in whom do you put the fullest measure of your trust in the earthly kingdom, those things that perhaps draw us away from God, or do you put the full measure of your trust in God's kingdom? Where does that, where is that place for you? So Jesus is standing before Pilate. And there, at that trial, there were certainly leaders of great power, politicians, military leaders, people with earthly power. And Jesus said to all of them that my kingdom is not from this world. Jesus' kingdom is not about building up massive amounts of control. Jesus' kingdom is not about power or possessions or success or the ultimate rule over and above another person. So what is Jesus' kingdom about? Jesus' kingdom is about relationship. Jesus' kingdom is about love and grace and forgiveness. It's about humility. It's about servanthood. So regardless of how old or young you may be, whether you're at school or at work or at home, how do you answer the following questions? Do you live a life that reflects that love, grace, and forgiveness and service? Do you reach out to the least of these with kindness and compassion? Do you seek to humbly serve rather than be served? And do the things you say and do and think reflect your faith and your life in Christ the King? On this day, we celebrate Christ as our King, as the one who reigns over all the earth. We do not celebrate an oppressive ruler, but one who is willing to die for all, and whose loving kindness endures forever. We celebrate a king who shares in our fears and experiences our pain and hurts and anguish. We celebrate a king who does not intimidate the weak and vulnerable, but reaches out to them with compassion. We celebrate a king who does not tear one another down, but seeks to build each and every one of us up. And we celebrate a king who day in and day out 
crowns you and me with mercy and love every day. And so with all of our earthly distractions, with those things that seem to want to draw us away from our relationship with God, my prayer is that you humbly walk with your Lord and place the full measure of your trust in Him. And in doing so, Go out into the world and reflect God's love to all. Let it be so. Amen.